Hey guys, and in this video, we're going to be creating a dashboard on Next.js. Now, this is my starter kit website, and I'm going to show you what our dashboard is going to look like. When I click on get started here, I see this beautiful dashboard. Now, the information is placeholder information, but I have the home tab, projects, finance, setting. And one thing you'll notice is every time I'm on a different tab, the URL changes right which is fantastic and this is what we're going to build and i'm going to show you how simply this can be done with very minimal code now one thing i need you to understand before we get into it is that the sidebar and the nav bar are um, shared shared ui like this will not change the only thing that changes about the sidebar is what tab is highlighted depending on the url depending on what uh slash we're on so slash home like slash dashboard home lights up slash dashboard slash projects projects light up etc etc so this is what we're going to be building one thing you will need is chat cn um, and Next.js, obviously, I already have a fresh install ready to go. And all that I have is on my main page. I have this uh, toggle to do between light mode and dark mode. We'll do light mode for now. And I have a button that will forward me to slash dashboard. Think of this as a beautiful home page, kind of like my starter kit here. But um, we're just going to have a button here. And then when I click on it, it should take me to the dashboard. But I haven't made anything yet, which is why it is empty. So let's go back. Let's do dark mode. All right. So let's create our dashboard. So I'm going to create a new file. Type in dashboard slash page.tsx. What this does is it'll create a folder dashboard and then page.tsx. And then I'm going to use RFC to create a React functional component. We'll call this dashboard page. And then if I save this and I go to dashboard, I see dashboard page. That is beautiful. Now, one thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to create a layout.tsx. And the reason why we have to create a layout.tsx is so that we can have the sidebar and the nav bar be shared amongst the different routes, right? So in order for us to do this, we're going to have to use layout.tsx. And for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to copy paste the existing one, paste it here. But I will be removing all this stuff right here. I will change this to dashboard layout. Uh, we'll remove the global.css. And then we'll remove this font stuff as well. Just clean it up. This is all we need. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to write some JSX. So let's do div. And in the div, we're going to do class name, grid, min height, screen, width, full. And then we're going to do large viewport grid calls 280 pixel one fr all right and then now there's two things we have to create we have to create um we have to create our dashboard sidebar and then we have to create our dashboard nav right so let's do the sidebar first so we're going to do dashboard sidebar let's do sidebar Right. And let's create this component. So what I'm going to do is under the dashboard folder, I'm going to create a new file. And I'm going to do bracket open components and I'm going to do slash dashboard side bar dot TSX. So what this does is it creates a, a folder with uh, brackets and the brackets essentially are saying this isn't a route. Right. So I, I don't usually put components that are going to be used in a specific folder once. Um, in the components folder, I'll just create like an inner component folder just for simplicity's sake. And it just makes things easier to find later down. So we're going to do RFC again. We have dashboard sidebar and then we're going to make sure this is important properly. So we get rid of the errors and we're going to save this. And we are going to do one thing. We're going to make this a client component. And I'll explain why in a second. Let's go back to our. Thing. All right. Okay. No errors. We're good to go. So now we're going to work on our sidebar. Now our sidebar again is going to require a little bit of uh, JSX. I'm going to copy paste it here instead of writing this whole thing out and boring you guys. Uh, but I'm going to explain exactly line by line how this works. So the first div um, large uh, LG block hidden border R height full. So basically this when it's a large viewport, so large meaning uh, greater than 10, 10, 24 pixels, um, this sidebar will show. But if it's less than 10, 24 pixels, this is default hidden, 
right? And the reason why this is the case is, for example, in this dashboard, when I make the screen smaller, notice how the sidebar disappears because the assumption is the person is now on tablet or mobile and you should probably have some sort of uh, drop down like that or sheet. I think that's what it's called in ShotCN because uh, it just makes for a better user experience. So that's what this does. And then this is just organizing, uh, setting the height, all that type of stuff. So let me import um, next link and then this CLSX is a very important uh, import. Essentially, what this does is this allows you to, I believe it's conditionally render CSS. So if I do uh, CLSX React, a lightweight utility driver used to manage applications of CSS classes. So basically, you can use it to uh, render specific classes based on the condition you set. And I'm going to show you that condition in a second. Let me just import. Uh, I'll just do add all missing imports. Some of them are. Oh, I need to install Lucid React, which is um, an icon uh, library, one of the best ones, in my opinion. One part I want to show you is how I use the CLSX uh, utility uh, function. So essentially what this does is you wrap your classes with it. So I wrap two sets of class classes. So the first one is when it's not highlighted. So notice how when it's not highlighted, nothing is on it. But when I click right and I'm on slash projects, notice how projects is highlighted. The way we achieve this is I use CLSX. I have my first set of classes. And then I do comma and then you open a bracket, you open brackets and then it's it's essentially an object. You have your second set of classes and then you have the condition to which this second set of classes um, activates. So notice how I have path name equals equals slash dashboard. So what I'm going to do is I need to import um, use path name from next navigation. And what this essentially does is I'll show you guys how this works is when you let me console log path name and show you how this works. So if I console log path name, notice here that when I console log path name, I see slash dashboard and that's the path that I'm on. So the reason why I'm going to use path name is path name is going to allow me to check what path I'm on. And if that path is uh, the one that corresponds with what I want highlighted, then the second set of classes will fire. So for example, you notice here, Home is highlighted. Now, let me just create another page um, called uh, projects. So we're going to do projects. We're going to do page.tsx. And we're just going to do a random component. I just want you guys to see how it changes. So when I click on projects, you see that? And again, no, can, no if else statements, none of that, all using CLSX, right? So, very simple, very intuitive. And just to keep, uh, just to show you that this is not a lot of code, we're just going to remove every other link other than home and projects because that's all we need. So again, this is how much code is needed. Again, all you need is the link tag, right? You have your class names, you have your two sets of classes. The first one when it's not uh, clicked on, the second one when it's clicked on, um, and you're essentially just going to copy paste these classes and then I have a nice icon so that it can, you know, it just looks nice. Um, and you do the same thing. Make sure you have an href that takes you to that path and then the path name. Um, also, make sure you use use path name, get the path name and then check if it's equal to the specified path that you want highlighted. And this is how easy setting up a sidebar is. So now that we have our sidebar set up. So let's work on our nav bar. So now I'm going to do dashboard nav. I'll just do dashboard nav bar, right? And I'm going to do main class name flex flex column gap four P four and then large gap six. Now these are all design preferences. You can have this however you want. I just want to show you how it is that we we uh, create a dashboard. So I'm going to go to my components. I'm going to do dashboard navbar dot TSX. I'm going to make sure this is imported. Uh, wait, did I? 
oh let me do rfc here and then let's make sure this is imported now it's going to give me an error because it says um we're wrapping it seems to be we're wrapping something but we're not we haven't specified it in dashboard nav, dashboard navbar so that's what we're going to do so let's go dashboard navbar and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pass a prop and this is the children's prop and children is a react node and that should work and then again i'm going to drop over some jsx and we're going to go over it instead of seeing me type this line by now let me show you how we have the navbar set up so the navbar again wrapped by div flex flex column right so we have a header component and now here here's where it gets interesting so we have dialogue and then dialogue is triggered by a hamburger menu icon and when the hamburger menu icon is clicked right the sheet content opens now in order for me to show you how this looks we're going to go back to our layout and then we're going to wrap we're going to place our children here essentially what this is going to do is the nav bar is wrapping the entire uh the the entire dashboard aside from the sidebar right notice how this nav bar pops up but there's one interesting thing i want to show you when i when i make the page smaller notice how the sidebar disappeared and now we have this hamburger menu that when i click notice how that that pops up and this is how it works let me go back to our code and let me show you so in the nash uh, in the dashboard nav bar this dialogue is uh has a sheet trigger right so basically that hamburger menu tr triggers so that this content can show and this content is essentially um just a title and then you have some buttons right again if i show you this if i minimize the screen when i click on this these are just buttons if i click on projects it's just going to take me to slash project if i click on home it's going to take me to slash dashboard and again this is all thanks to chat cn if you go to sheet that's that's what it is i just have it popping out from the left so that's literally all it is and at the end again the nav bar wraps children so you can think of it as the nav bar sort of um, on top and technically it could be in the bottom as well if we had like a footer but it's not and the children is wrapped by the nav bar so the way we have things set up now when we go back to our layout, we have our dashboard sidebar, we have our dashboard nav bar that wraps our children. Now, here's the interesting thing. We're pretty much done. All you have to do now is go to your sidebar. And if let's say you want to add another page, let's say I want to add you um, videos page. All I do is copy this link, paste it underneath. I'll do dashboard slash videos. I'll do path name dashboard slash videos here, right? And then we can name this tab videos. And then all I have to do is create a page under dashboard. So I'm going to do videos slash page.tsx. And I'm going to do RFC videos, right? And I'll say this is the videos page. And when I click save, if I go back to my project, I'll see the videos tab. I click on it. This is the videos page. And in order for it to show up on the mobile view, I need to go to my I need to go to my nav bar. So dashboard nav bar, go to dialogue and then literally just copy here, like from dialogue clause to dialogue close, paste. And what was it? Videos. And it's going to be slash dashboard slash videos. Right. So let's test it out. Make the screen small. I'm going to go to home. We're on the home page. And then when I click videos slash videos. And ladies and gentlemen, that is how easily you can build a dashboard, right? Very intuitive, very clean, um, in a very simple manner. Now, the code for all this is in my starter kit. So you can go to starter.rasmic.xyz, or you can click on the GitHub um, link down below, and you just go to slash dashboard. Um, the file convention, convention I use is pretty much similar. And I just wanted to show you the thought process behind it. Again, I will have the GitHub link down below in the descriptions. Just go to the dashboard folder. In fact, I'll just show you for simplicity's sake. So you go on my GitHub next to your starter template. And then you go to app. 
and then dashboard. So everything is here for you. The code is all here. I just wanted to show you my thought process behind how I build dashboards. But thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you want to see something else. If you have any feedback, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the